it is, of course, the essence of Christianity that God loves man for his sake, became man and died. But that does not prove that man is the sole end of nature. Do you remember back in 2019 when a whole group of people were saying online that they were going to storm Area 51 and demand answers about extraterrestrial life? Yeah, it ended up being about like 100 people and they all lived in their mom's basement. But the point was a lot of people are curious. Is there extraterrestrial life? Does our government know something about it? And if there is, what we're going to talk about on this episode of the Midweek Moment is, does that mean we should throw out our faith? Does the existence of extraterrestrial life damage religion? That's what we're talking about today. When we talk about extraterrestrial life, we all know that it could mean a million billion different things. Every single sci-fi book or movie has a different depiction of it. It could be things like E.T., the Borg, little green men coming out of a flying saucer, xenomorphs ripping open people's chests so that they can come and kill us all. It could be like that little guy that's inside someone's brain in MIB. It could be Jabba the Hutt or even Pizza the Hutt. Jason, what's your favorite uh, alien movie? You know, I, th I think I'm a big fan of the Wookiees. I really am. Okay. Or uh, I'd have to go with the Navi people from Avatar. Okay. I wasn't the biggest fan of Avatar, but I love yeah. Wookiees. Do you want to hear my Wookiee? Go for it. <laughs> okay. That was pretty good, right? A lot better than mine would be. <laughs> okay. That's pretty bad. But the point is like there's all sorts of – our imaginations go wild of what this um, extraterrestrial life could look like. Is it even going to be carbon-based like life here on our planet? We don't know because we don't even know if extraterrestrial life is out there. Now, science kind of, and philosophy kind of pushes both ways. There's the Drake equation that can say, okay, these are the things that have to line up so there could be life on a planet. And if a planet is in like that Goldilocks zone where it's far enough from a star that it's warm, but not too far that it gets too cold, that, that maybe life could be there. And at the amount of billions and trillions of planets in the universe, there could be billions of planets that have uh, the ability for life to emerge and evolve and even become intelligent. So it seems like scientifically there will be life out there, right? Well, but then there's also the Fermi paradox, which says basically if there is intelligent life out there, it would be smart enough to have already made contact with us by the fact that we have not received contact by those aliens, they probably don't exist. So science philosophy kind of pushes both ways. We don't know. Is there extraterrestrial life? We're not really quite sure. But if there is, if there is, some people think that it completely destroys belief in God and in Christianity and the Bible in particular. Physicist Paul Davies once said that the discovery of extraterrestrial life would have catastrophic results for religion. Catastrophic results. So is that true? And why does he say that? Well, I think it's false. And here's why. Well, Paul Davies thinks, and other philosophers who are like him, they think that because the Bible doesn't talk about it, and because the Bible focuses on human beings, that all those religions, and there's other religions like it, should get thrown out now that there could be more life in the universe. But here's the thing. One, an argument from silence is one of the worst arguments you can ever make. Just because the Bible doesn't talk about it doesn't mean it's, it's excluded by the Bible. The Bible actually doesn't talk about dinosaurs, doesn't talk about Snapchat or bubble tea either, and yet those things exist. Just because the Bible doesn't talk about something doesn't mean it's excluded. In fact, the Bible talks about a lot of things that God has created, even things that we don't understand. Colossians 1.16 says this, For in him, in Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Meaning there's all sorts of stuff we don't understand. And if there's a God, like the Bible teaches, that created everything in the entire universe, it would say that maybe he could have created life on other planets as well. I mean, just on our planet, God created avocados, aardvarks, Venus flytraps, and even things like the sparkle muffin. Yes, you should look at this because it looks like an alien to me. And if God could create something like that on our planet, what could he create out there in the vastness of the universe? So then the next question is, well, then why is the Bible so centered around us and human beings? Wouldn't that be completely thrown out by the existence of other intelligent life? Well, no, not necessarily, because the Bible actually doesn't teach that we are the most important thing in the universe. C.S. Lewis addressed this in his book, Miracles. 
This is fascinating. This is what he wrote. He said, it is, of course, the essence of Christianity that God loves man for his sake, became man and died. But that does not prove that man is the sole end of nature. And this is in a section he's talking about aliens. He says, in the parable, it was one lost sheep that the shepherd went in search of. It was not the only sheep in the flock, and we are not told that it was the most valuable, save insofar as the most desperately in need has, while the need lasts, a peculiar value in the eyes of love. See, God saved us not because we were the only or the best or most important thing in the universe. He saved us because he loves. He is love. And he wanted to rescue people that are fallen in sin and in destruction. Psalm 147 verses 3 and 4 is one of the most amazing passages for this. I've actually read this passage when I've been at the bedside of people who are sick and in the hospital. It says in Psalm 147, 3, it says, He, God, heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He loves every individual and wants to heal them, wants to have a relationship with them because he loves. But get verse 4, listen to this. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. The same God that can love an individual created the vastness of the universe. And those are right next to each other in the Bible. Meaning, could there be other life? Potentially, maybe, we don't know yet. But that doesn't exclude a belief in Jesus, a belief in the Bible, a belief in Christianity. In fact, I believe that they could go hand in hand. So I hope this helps answer you, uh, your questions about aliens. If you have more, send a comment. In the comment section, send me a DM. I'd love to hear from you. Share this. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. And we'll be back with you for another Midweek Moment next week.